Good morning folks, it's Sid here from Border Archery. Um, what I want to try and do is I want to try and explain, uh, and I'm going to make an analogy, um, the difference between a glass fibre limb, a carbon limb, and a genuine carbon limb. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the construction. So what you've got is you've got a core material, piece of glass fibre, and a piece of glass fibre, and there's your glass fibre limb. Okay. Now you can do exactly the same thing with carbon, but it gets more difficult, okay? Let me try and explain. When you look at uh, a boy racer, um, a guy that likes his cars, they like to have carbon fibre body panels on their car, and um, some of it is just downright aesthetics, it's cheap, right? So, for example, what they would do is they would take the bonnet of their car, the trunk, um, depending on what part of the world you're from, and they would take some carbon fiber, right? Some carbon. They take the the, the trunk, the so the, the the bonnet, the the metalwork, and they'd wrap some carbon around it, and they'd cure it. Okay. So let's say the bonnet starts off with I don't know thirty kilos in weight, the piece of metal that hides the engine, um. That would start off with 30 kilos in weight, and then you'd add another kilo, so it ends up 31 kilo. But boy, look at me, I've got a carbon bonnet on my car. Yeah. But then then you've got <clears throat> aesthetic carbon, but we'll keep the cost down. So what they do, um, what you could do is you could um, make a, a mould of your, a, a female mould of the bonnet, take the bonnet out, and then you could lay in some carbon fibre into that mould and then you could fill it with glass fibre. So you'd probably save a little bit of weight there. Um, it'd probably still be lighter than the steel panel, maybe, depending on how they did it. Um, but the real, the real deal is where they take that mould and they put carbon in it and they put more carbon in it and they make all the little hinge points, they make the, all the, the, the cross bracing out of carbon and the whole thing gets a lot lighter. Right, and that's the real deal. And from the outside, you can't tell the difference if it's a steel panel covered, uh, glass covered, or a genuine carbon one. You can't really tell. But try lifting it though, you'd find a difference. Okay, so what we find in the archery world is, um, and it's happened recently with quite a big player in the trad market, is they took a glass limb and they literally covered it in carbon. It's still the same limb. It's still a glass limb. It's it's not that impressive, okay? And it's really quite simple what could happen there is that if you were to make a 45-pound limb, you'd make a 45-pound limb, but what you would do is you'd put the carbon, the carbon weave, you'd put that at 45 degrees on the limb. Yeah, you can see them running up that way. So the carbon runs at 45 degrees. And you get very little weight gain. You might get a pound, two pounds. So if I made a 45 pound limb, then what I could do is I could skinny the limb down a little and that would uh, justify a two, maybe three feet per second speed gain because the limb would be slightly skinnier. But the limb would become torsionally stiffer and you just bought a carbon limb. You bought a glass limb with carbon on it. Yeah. But the big difference, again, exactly the same as the car. You take a 35 kilo um, 30 kilo bonnet, you wrap some carbon in it, it becomes 31 or 36 kilos, whatever. It's got like one more kilo of carbon on there. Um, you end up with a, a mass gain on the, 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 the bonnet. But if you went to a full carbon bonnet, you'd probably be talking about 10 kilos for a genuine carbon bonnet, not 30 kilos. And that's where the advantage comes in, right? So rather than using unidirectional glass um, to make your limb, um, what you could do is um, here you can see um, you've got a unidirectional carbons, okay? So there's unidirectional carbon, right? So there it is there. See it? It's all microscopic little fibres of carbon fibre, right? Um, and that, that stuff... Um, that stuff really changes things, okay? So what you would do is uh, you take your 45 degrees, you take your unidirectional, and you lay it up, kind of, whatever, yeah? Um, and you cure it, and that would be your laminate there because you'd have your unidirectional carbon inside there. And that 
would weigh a ton less than that. And that's where the speed gain comes in. That's where well, some of the speed gain comes in. Um, and that's where the light mass limb comes in. That, that whippy, that whippy fast feeling that you get on a full genuine carbon limb. Right? You don't get that on a glass limb with carbon on it because it's just still a glass limb but with more composites. Yeah. So um so be careful, be careful what you're buying, right? And and that's that's what I'm talking about as I slowly mush this piece of carbon together. Um yeah, that's what I'm talking about with carbon. It's it's a different game, right? And to generate a carbon limb, you're not just taking your steel bonnet and wrapping a bit of carbon on it. Yeah, you're doing something away more than that. You're you're having to take a model of the original bonnet, the original panel of the car, and then you're having to completely um, remake the whole thing. You're making a mould off it to then use the mould to make an original product. Yeah, You're not just taking the original product and um, making it slightly different. Okay, And that's the difference between a carbon limb, a real carbon limb, and a glass limb with carbon on it. Okay, So try not to be duped. Yeah, try and work out how much glass content is in the um, in the model in the the limb. Ask the manufacturer how much glass is in there. They'll tell you there's very little, but ask them how much. You know, thirty thou, twenty thou, uh, thousandth of an inch. Um, ask them, and they'll tell you. Well, they should tell you anyway. Um, but because what I'm saying is, there's very few manufacturers who are legitimately glass fiber free. There is no glass fibre in them, okay? We only use um, uh, glass fibre now as accents, colours inside our risers, yeah? Um, we don't really need to, but we do because it's, it's, uh, it's a composite. Now, we tried getting some um, unidirectional glass for this um, reinforcement, but um, we were told that we had to go and buy it through one of their dealers rather than, as we used to, buy it direct. So um, we decided to heck with that. Let's make it in-house. So we now pretty much make, um, if looking at this riser here, we make everything from the metal work, the limb bolts. We make um, the, yeah, we make absolutely everything in the riser. Um, we, don't, we don't make the metal, metal pins. Why? Because you can buy them cheaper than we could make them. Um, yeah, but we make all of our inserts. Um, we make the whole damn thing. Um, composites a lot all right so gives us full control um but yeah unidirectional carbon versus woven carbon right it's quite funky stuff um and that's that's what i wanted to say today all right so any questions pop them in the the comments and i'll see i'll do my best to answer them but um hopefully that makes sense um yeah just because it's got carbon on it doesn't make it a carbon limb all right thanks for watching guys